If you're not capturing email addresses on your WordPress website, you're literally leaving money on the table each day. But the good news is that you can start fixing this issue right now. And it's only gonna take you about five minutes with Thrive Architect. Hi there, I'm Tony Lewis, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a simple lead capture form on your website. You know, when I first started with this stuff, I actually thought that I needed to know coding or, you know, I was expecting to have to hire someone to set up a proper form for me. And it turns out that it's actually a way simpler process than I thought it was gonna be, especially if you're using Thrive Architect. All right, let me walk you through the whole process. We're gonna cover how to set up a capture form. We're also going to learn how to connect it with our email marketing service of choice. We're gonna make sure it looks good and decent on our page. And we're also going to be adding some spam protection filters, which trust me, you're going to want. All right, let's turn your website into an email collecting machine in the next few minutes. Perfect, so I'm in the back end of my WordPress website. And before we start, creating and designing our capture form, let's actually get the backend infrastructure ready for us to be able to quickly connect our form to our email marketing service of choice, okay? So in order to do that, I'm assuming and I'm operating under the assumption that uh, you've already installed Thrive Suite on your uh, WordPress website. And if you've done so, I want you to head over to Thrive Dashboard. And if you scroll down to the bottom where it says API connections and you press on this manage connections green button, uh, you'll find a place for where you can uh, actually create new API connections, right? So for example, I have a new connection here created for SendGrid, but there are a lot of different services that you can integrate Thrive Suite with. When it comes to email marketing, we do anything from ActiveCampaign to Aweber to uh, ConvertKit, Drip, Fluence, CRM. We, we do a, a lot of them. I'll be surprised if you're using something that doesn't integrate with Thrive Suite, but if there is something that you're looking to integrate Thrive Themes with, um, Natively speaking, just reach out to our support team. We're always open to hear more suggestions of connections that you want to see integrating uh, with Thrive Suite natively, okay? So I want you to just pick out your email marketing service of choice. For example, if you were to do Drip, uh, you see uh, th that we're going to prompt you for two things, right? The first one is an API token and then a client ID. Uh, most email marketing services are going to essentially give you these two things, right? Which is an API token, which is essentially going to let Thrive Themes get, you know, get inside your email marketing uh, system. And then a client ID, which usually helps email marketing services identify, okay, which account inside your Drip account or which account inside your SendGrid account do you want to give Thrive Themes access to? So if we go to Drip, for example, here, if I go inside settings, user settings, you'll be able to see how if I scroll down to the very bottom, it's going to be blurred for you. So you're not going to be able to see it, but there is an API token that I can just quickly grab this, uh, copy it and just come back into the back end of my WordPress website, which is this one and just paste it in here. And I can do the same thing with my client ID. I'm not actually going to be connecting to Drip. I've already established my connection with SendGrid, which again, it's pretty easy. Inside SendGrid, you would just go inside settings, API keys. Again, you're not seeing the API keys here. You're, you know, they're completely blur blurred. But on your end, if you're using SendGrid, you can just hit this button that says create API key give Thrive Themes full access, give it a, uh, you know, give it a, an appropriate name so that you remember what the API key is for. You can just, you know, type in Thrive Themes or something, create and view, and then you'll be able to see both your public and your private API keys. And again, just head back over to the back end of your WordPress website and paste in your API keys. So that is going to take care of allowing our capture form to send emails into our email marketing service. This is great, and it's only gonna take you like two minutes to get this set up. Now, looking at the front end of my website, this is a pretty minimalistic, clean blog. It's the aesthetics that I usually go for. It's not very distracting, and it presents content in front of people's eyes. But the only opt-in form that I'm using on this particular blog right now is the one that I have towards the bottom. It, you know, it's, it's okay, it's clean, it's very Tony-like, like I, I just, I like to keep things very simple. It pops in a way because it's not blending in with the white background, like, you know, the search bar here where people can uh, drop in some keywords. This is very subtle. This is, in my opinion, actually hard to find, which is okay because this particular search box, this one that I'm highlighting right now, uh, it's only there in case people want to look for uh, particular content pieces. It's not something that I want to prioritize in front of users' eyes, but something as important as an opt-in form 
you know, you want to make that pop a little bit because, you know, I was reading an article the other day on, on HubSpot that said, hey, if you don't actually put in the time into designing a, uh, you know, a capture form that pops and that makes people look at it and want to opt in, you can, I mean, that is like literally like you can boost conversions by 93%. So it's worth spending just a little bit of time just designing the, the form so that, you know, it captures people's attention. Um, and that is what we're going to try to do. So I want to find a place here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find a place where we can drop in an optim form and it, we're going to keep it super simple. Just ask people for their name and email um, to reduce friction as much as possible. Make it pop a little bit and see what we can come up with. So I'm going to fire up this page with Thrive Architect. Now, but see, here's the problem. I have one long uh, list of blog posts here that runs across the entire um height of of the page right so i'm currently displaying six items so the you know the most recent six uh blog posts that i've published and i can't actually break up this uh blog post item because well it, it, i just can't do that right so we're gonna try to find we're gonna try and, and and be creative here so what i'm gonna do first things first is duplicate the blog post list so now i have two instances of the same sort of like blog post list and I'm going to tell Thrive Architect that for the very first one, I only want to display two items. And I'm going to go inside the filtering settings. And I want to start, no, actually, this is fine. I'm going to hit save and close. Uh, so we're displaying the two most recently published blog posts. And then for the second blog post list, I'm going to go inside the filtering settings. And I want to show, yeah, six, six blog posts is fine. But I want to start from item number three. Because the first two items of our list, uh, which we're uh, showing in terms of date published and we're uh, sorting and descending order, you know, we're already displaying those in our first blog post list. So let's hit save and close. And technically speaking, yeah, see, we've got post number one, post number two, and then we start with post number three in that second blog post list. Okay, nifty little way of making sure that we can uh, at the very least break up those two different blog posts apart because now we do have some room in here to actually look for our lead generation form and drop it in between those two blog post lists. Now, important, there are two different types of forms. We've got contact forms and we have lead generation forms. The one that we're going after is the lead generation form. And we have a variety of different templates that we can start working from. There's no need to really start from scratch. I do wanna try and keep it nice and simple again really want to try to reduce friction as much as possible. So how about, yeah, now we're talking. Okay, we've got this goldish secondary color that I'm using throughout the entire site. So I think that I just want to get rid of some of this um, bottom padding that I think this blog post list has. Maybe it's the, oh, actually the button has some bottom margin. All right, so instead of getting rid of the bottom margin for this bot button, which I don't want to do because I do want buttons to have this 64 uh, pixels of bottom margin to make sure that there's enough distance in between blog posts. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to um, add in 64 pixels of bottom margin here to my uh, capture form. And now I have, I think that's probably about it, right? Actually, it's probably going to have to be 84 pixels because I do have an additional 20 pixels of top margin here in my capture form. So let's go ahead and do 84. Yeah, and th now that gives us an even amount of spacing in between these two different elements. Okay, I'm happy with this. So with that said, um, maybe we should try and add like a, an actual call to action here. I do like saying something along the lines of, hey, there are secrets I only share via email. And if people like the kind of content that, um, that I talk about, then they can go ahead and sign up. I'm gonna make this bold. And maybe I could potentially add an, uh, another friction remover here towards the bottom. Huh, now I do have a problem, which is that I have these 84 pixels uh, of bottom margin in my form pushing this text element apart. So I'm gonna have to go back, get rid of those 84 pixels. Let's just go ahead and do 10 and give this text element 84 pixels of bottom margin. All right, that's better. I'm gonna get rid of the bold option here. And I'm gonna write, I hate spam as much as anyone. 
there's only real value being delivered, being sent in my emails. I'm actually gonna make this a little smaller. Let's do like 14, maybe like 12 even. Yeah, 12 is nice. I just, I wanna make sure that that is nice and subtle. Like we really wanna make sure people concentrate on what really matters, which is reading the copy and just dropping in their email address. Now it's important that in your end, uh, I'm kind of just being lazy about this because this blog is meaningless right now. But in your end, if you have a lead magnet, if you've got a checklist, if you've got something that you can incentivize people with to make sure that, to make sure that they actually leave their email address, because you know there are secrets that I only share via email, that's not really gonna push people to drop in their email address, okay? I'm just giving you guys an example, but again, think of a lead magnet that you can actually offer people and uh, that will definitely boost conversions for you guys. I think I'm happy with this, to be honest. So we've got two blog posts, a nice call to action here that lets people drop in their emails. That's gonna send people inside my SendGrid account. A bunch of different blog posts and then another call to action here running across the bottom section. Not bad. I sort of like this. Perhaps I wanna get the blog post. Maybe I wanna make this bigger and I don't know if I want some more space. Let's give this like 24 pixels as top margin. Yeah, and then this form, let's actually just do 10 pixels. Yeah, that's much better, much, much better. Kind of really like this, perfect. So now the only thing that we've got left is actually connect the form with our SendGrid account. So here, if I click on my form, um, you can see how Thrive Architect is telling me that, hey, you can send leads to, and it's giving me the option to add a new connection. So I'm gonna click on this add connection button and all those API connections that we've set up in the background in the back end of our WordPress website, boom, they're now showing up here. So in our case, we're gonna send people into SendGrid and my mailing list that I wanna send them to is the uh, lewistony.com mailing list. Uh, we're gonna send people's uh, name, email address, and here's the fun part. So Thrive Architect actually has a really cool uh, spam protection filter that uh, we can enable. So if I enable this Thrive Spam Protection uh, feature, what this does is there is a hidden field that is going to be displayed in the front of our site that only bots are going to see, okay? So real people are still only gonna see these two different fields, right? Name and email. But there will be a third additional one here which is going to be invisible for users, but bots won't know that it's invisible, which means that bots that do fill out that hidden field are going to trigger an alarm inside Thrive Architect and Thrive Architect won't send that email address inside your email marketing list, which is great because no one wants spammy emails in their email marketing system. Those are emails that you're going to have to pay for and you don't want to be sending emails to crappy bots, like you want real people inside your email list. So make sure that you turn this on because it's gonna be really, really helpful for you guys. Now, the last thing that we wanna double check is what happens when people actually, um, you know, convert and once people actually opt in into our form. So we've got two different options. We could redirect people to a custom URL and this is great if you're using something like um, Monster uh, Insights or Google Analytics or some sort of you know other you know script tracking uh, app that that is going to help you keep track of conversions. So if you want to, for example, uh, see how well this opt-in form is functioning, you could send a uh, people to a thank you page and then keep track of how many people actually land on that thank you, on that thank you page. Or if you want to keep it simple, then you can just show people a success notification and say, "Hey, you're in. Check your inbox for." the checklist I promised. And this is what it would look like. And when people fill out that form, then they're simply gonna see that success notification. And you know, for some instances, keeping it simple like this is, is more than enough. 
perfect. So there you have it. We've just created a professional lead capture form that is connected to our email marketing service, that is protected against spam, that is designed to convert, and that is 100% ready to help you grow your email list. I guess it's now your turn to get this set up on your website and start building that email list. Remember that every day without a lead capture form is a day of missed opportunities. And hey, if you wanna learn more about all of the great things that you can build with Thrive Architect, be sure to head over to thrivethemes.com. I mean, lead generation is just the very beginning. There's so much more you can create to grow your business from landing pages to complete websites. And you know, Thrive Architect is gonna have you covered. So yeah, links in the description box. I'm down in the comments section in case you have any questions. And I truly appreciate your time. Thanks again. Bye.